Night, welcome back to another video. Now today we have another episode of Sakura Succubus. You guys seem to have liked this so far. <laughs> um, hopefully we get some new stuff. Now where we left off, uh, we just woke up and we're about to head to work. As you can probably see from here, Hiraki's expression. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into it. Safe. I step onto the train mere seconds before the automatic doors slide shut. I have to nudge a couple of smartly dressed businessmen out of the way, which earns me a few reproachful, reproachful, excuse me, reproachful glances, but it's a minor price to pay for getting to work on time. Why should I care? What a bunch of strangers think of me. It's not like I, I'll see them again. I settle into a nook in the corner of the train, hemmed in by the sea of arms and elbows. The train's full to bursting, just like always. It's a warm day, and I feel particularly hot and uncomfortable. At least I'm right at, by the door. That gives me an ample view of the Tokyo scenery as it speeds by. Not that it's all that interesting, if I'm being perfectly honest. Tourists in Tokyo like to gawp and stare at almost everything, but I lived here for years and I'm accustomed to all the tall gray buildings. They don't hold any mystery to me anymore. An office blocks just an office block at the end of the day regardless of how high it is or how many windows it has the train rumbles around me around a bend and i shift my head bumping against the wall we're pulling into the next station not that it's any business of mine i don't plan to get off here the train soon comes to a stop. The door slides open and a bevy of men and women struggle to educate themselves from the glorified tin can. I press my body against the wall so as to give the crowd more space to disperse. As I do, I yawn. <sighs> I feel pretty tired. I didn't get much sleep last night, and my shower little did to wake me up. I'm sure it's hard trying to please a whole harem of needy succubi. And speaking of needy succubi, Hiroki, it's good to see you again. Huh? Oh, let me guess. Cosmos? And I can hear a sweet, girlish voice coupled with two very soft somethings pressed up against me. I recognize that voice, not to mention the heft of that chest against my own. Cosmos, I knew it, that's right, it's me. I was wondering when I was gonna see you again. What's up, girl? Cosmo looks at me. A coy smile plays about her lips. Her head is tilted to one side and her cute, stubby ponytail flutters. Everything about Cosmos is cute, actually. She's very upfront about her feelings, which is a very big plus. I can't imagine a you cuddling up to me like this in public, but that might be a blessing in disguise. Hey, Cosmos. I glance about the train awkwardly. The last of the nude passengers have fled in and the doors sliding shut. Nobody seems to be paying us much attention. This compartment comprised of about 80% businessmen who look too tired and defeated by the daily grind to care overly much beyond the upcoming workday. I doubt my interaction with Cosmos has much meaning for them, but there's always a chance a few of Cosmos fans might be there. Cosmos does have over 2 million followers on Rapid Pound. You never, you can never be too careful. I'll make a fuss. 
I'm a bit worried about this, but oh well, I haven't seen her in a long time. Might as well let her cling. I'm sure it'll be fine. Besides, if I ask her to let go, it might upset her. Cosmos isn't the sort to throw a temper tantrum. She's not like AU. But if she cries, she'll definitely attract a bunch of attention. I could do without that right now. It's good to see you again. I miss you. I miss you too. I miss you too. so, so much. Cosmos nuzzles her cheek against my chest, purring like a cat. I feel like it's been ages since we last spoke. Tell me about it. I was starting to suffer from withdrawal syndrome. Oh yeah? Like what? It's strange, but my heart felt so dull and leaning. The sky <laughs> started to look gray, and my favorite snacks started to taste odd. I still took a bunch of photos for my fans, but my heart wasn't really in it. Some of them noticed that I got several comments on my last photo set where I was wearing a cute swimsuit. A swimsuit, huh? I'd like to see that. I might be Cosmo's boyfriend, but I yet to see her in a bikini. Fair enough. My fans said my smile didn't seem genuine. Uh, it didn't light up my eyes. I didn't really understand it at the time, but now, after seeing you, I feel so warm and fuzzy. I can't stop smiling. This must be true love. You're so sappy. I grinned, then rubbed the top of Cosmo's head. I'd feel bad if I hampered your work in any way, but I'm glad you were thinking about me. <laughs> Thanks, Cosmos. I love you too, even if I've been a bit absent lately. I try to put more time aside for you in the future. Maybe we can go on a date this weekend. How does that sound? A date? Cosmos' eyes lit up. She's staring at me, her face illuminated with innocent happiness. That sounds like fun. Great. Are you free this Saturday? If I wasn't before, I am now. Uh, you should know that you take priorities, Hideki. Nothing is more important than, to me than you. I really do love you. Cosmo giggles and presses a kiss against my cheek. I probably should tell her to be a bit more cautious. Nobody's staring, but you never know. But ask her. I might be a warrior at heart, but I can throw cautions to the wind from time to time, particularly if it, it'll make Cosmos happy. The payoff is totally worth it. <clears throat> she's always adorable, but she looks even better when she smiles. <laughs> Tell me about it. Ah, what a day. I feel tired already and I haven't even gotten to work. Not that I'm complaining. Need to get my act together. If I'm gonna make all five of my succubus girlfriends happy, I need to keep working to better myself. I think I'm pretty average. My home isn't very lavish and my job isn't all that impressive. But if I keep tolling away, I'm sure I'll be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with my partners. Speaking of which, I saw a you and Hazel yesterday and Cosmos earlier this morning, but I haven't seen Marina in a while. I think she's busy with work. And then there's Hifumi. What, what has she getting up to? I know she's been busy shooting a new movie, but... Ah, I pause in the middle of the street, hands jammed into my pockets. My eyes meet those of Yamamoto Fumi, the famous actress, but this is not Fumi in the flesh. This Fumi is far bigger than I am, and she towers above me on a bright billboard that overlooks the street. That is cute. That is adorable. <laughs> she looks wonderful in that dress, by the way. This Ifumi is wearing a dress. It's very sleek, 
sexy sort of a wedding dress while display quite a lot of her burst and milky whiteness of her back. The white transparent veil is affixed to her inky black hair and cream colored roses and ribbons adorn her outfit like something you might see on a fancy cake. Fumi certainly looks mouth-watering enough. <laughs> Trust me, I think I can already see it. <laughs> her length of her full skirt is very demure, and her large burst creates a nice contrast within it. She looks very sexy. Uh, I'm not the only person who standing in the street gawking. Part of me feels a little jealous. I like to keep Hifumi for myself, but I'm happy to s she's so endearingly popular. Hifumi's purple eyes are shining with the uh, abashing happiness of the newlywed looking of her feels. Soothing, somehow. This large, blown up picture of Hifumi must be advertising for her latest movie. She told me a little bit about it last I spoke with her, which must have been a couple weeks ago, I think? She told me of a romantic comedy in the movie Hifumi plays a woman who sells bridal gowns for a living. After sewing so many dresses for the women, Hifumi's character begins to dream of wearing such a gown for herself, and so, she begins to sew herself the most magnificent wardrobe of wedding dresses despite not having a fiance or even a boyfriend. Fumi's character starts to wear a wedding dress out and about to make herself feel happy. In doing so, it, she's catching the attention of several young bachelors which soon begin to veil of her attentions. It sounds like divining enough, but I can't imagine the movie will be all that complex. I doubt it, it'll win any awards when it finally comes out, but it cast, it is star stunned, star studded, I don't know. This movie might be marketed towards women, but I bet droves of men will flock to see it too on account of Afumi's fame. Maybe I should go and watch it too. Romantic comedies aren't really my thing, but it will be nice to see Fumi on big screen. Since I am her husband, I will support her. It'll be a bit awkward seeing five handsome actors flirt with her, but it's not like it'll be real. It's all make-believe, and besides, I really do have five whole lovers. If Fumi feels all jealous about this arrangement, she doesn't say anything. She's very agreeable. Fumi can put up with real relationships, but so I should be able to put up with her fictional ones. It's only fair. I don't want to be a hypocrite. It's a little sad that I can see Fumi as much as I like, but I know you're working hard. You aren't really oppressive, Fumi. I smile and shake my head, bemused. Jeez, I can't hardly believe I'm dating a person like her. Life's full of surprises. All of a sudden, I'm feeling sentimental, but I think I might have dolls on the street corner a little too long. With a great effort, I tear my eyes away from the billboard and fish my phone out of my pocket. I check the time and then gasp, huh? It's that late already? I've got to get going or I won't be able to make it to work. <sighs> I've really gotten to learn to stop spacing out. Don't we all? Don't we all? I'm getting to work a few minutes before nine o'clock. I'm not late, technically I'm early, but the rest of the coworkers are there already, bowing over, bowed over their desks. My boss is something of a slave driver. Work started, officially at 9 o'clock. He preferred us to get there at least 15 minutes early. A few months ago, he chewed me out of being so lack. Ogazawara, good morning, my boy. Ah, yes, um, good morning, sir. Now, what's with 
the mealy mouth reply. You should be a bit more enthusiastic. It's a beautiful morning, won't you agree? Yes, um, uh, it's positively divine. That's the spirit. Now are you ready to get to work? I'm expecting results. Yes, sir. My boss hasn't scolded me half as much as he used to. In fact, he's been pretty friendly. I never imagined we've ever been on good terms. I've worked for the Saka Daily for a few years and I've never quite seen eye to eye with my boss. He's a large, overwhelming man in body and in personality. He's the sort of person who commands attention when he walks into the room, and he's not afraid of telling people exactly what he thinks of them. I used to complain about him all the time with my colleagues, behind his back of course. He's not all that likable. I don't think he likes me all that much either. He didn't, at least, but that changed when he learned about my connections with Marina. Marina's influence has helped out our agency land all sorts of jobs. My boss and my colleagues don't know the exact nature of our relationship, but I think they can make an educated guess. We did go on a trip on a hot spring together after all. My boss is well aware of that I have friends in high places, and now he's doing all he can to flatter my ego. He's incredibly transparent. To be honest, it makes me very uncomfortable. My colleagues have taken a very dean view of my new status in the office. I was never all that close to my co-workers, but we used to go drinking from time to time, and they were never above chatting to me. We were all in the same boat, victims of my boss's capricious whims. Now my boss is paying me a special attention, my colleagues have turned their backs on me. They're particularly jealous of my relationship with Marina and you and Cosmos, etc. all. Being a popular guy is surprisingly hard. Let me run you through the day's agenda, Ogazawara. My boss issues me orders while I nod and jot them down on my laptop. It looks like I have a couple of complex jobs to take care of. First, I have to attend some dull, dry government conference to take a few photos of the upcoming article. Then I have to go to some sporting events. Event, excuse me. I've got a busy day ahead of me. Well, I guess too much work is better than no work. And there you have it. That's a lot, but I'm sure you can manage. My boss slaps a large hand on my shoulder and laughs. You've proven yourself to be quite capable over the last few months. I had my reservation about you at first, but I'll admit, but I wish you enough to admit when my judgment is a rant. With your connection, you've become an indemnizable part of our company. We never would have been admitted to this conference if your little friend, Miss Wakazuki, Wakatsuki, excuse me, had intervened our, on our behalf. We're really going places thanks to you. Oh, oh no, uh, I ducked my head a bust. It's nothing, sir. If that's all Marina's doing, not mine. You don't need to thank me for her help but she's only helping us because of you. We all know that, it's obvious. I can't say I understand what you are to Miss Wakazuki, but I hope you hang on to her. She's been a great blessing. <laughs> My boss laughed uproariously as though he told of a funny joke. His voice is very, very loud and I wince. My colleagues are all glaring at me. I can hear a few of them whispering among themselves. It looks like the boss is sucking up to Gazawara again. <sighs> like that's anything new. It's not fair. 
If I'd come to the office as late as him, I would have been chewed out. It's one rule for him, and another for us. It's like he's untouchable. He must have been feeling pretty smug about all this. I bet he's feeling especially smug about his relationship. This coworker makes little quotation marks with his fingers with Wakazuki Marina. Wakazuki Marina of all people, I can't believe a plain ordinary guy like him would be able to pull her. There's no justice in this world. Some people have lives way too easy. What about the rest of us? The colleagues sound pretty annoyed, and I can't say I blame them. I'd be annoyed if I was in their shoes. Their jealous looks are making me feel kind of bad, though. I don't think I've done anything to apologize for. My boss is one at fault for floundering their fa his favoritism like this, but my natural instinct is to bow my head. I don't really want my coworkers to hate me. Hey, you lot! My boss overhearing their malicious whispering glowering glowers <laughs> at my colleagues stop gossiping among yourselves and start working I don't pay you to flap your lips maybe I'll consider what you have to say when you contribute enough to the company but not a single one of you is there yet compared to Agazawara y'all are parasites you're not even flick my look at my boots now shut up Yes, boss. A dull, apathetic chorus of voices respond to my boss's jabs. Head swivel and eyes focus on the computer screens and the steady click clacks of keyboards fills the office. Nobody's talking anymore. Nobody's looking at me either, but I can sense the resentment in the air. The atmosphere's awfully tense. It feels like a powdered cake. Ready to blow and it's all my fault. This is pretty uncomfortable. I wasn't made to be the center of the tension. Of attention. Ignore me. Very good. My boss nods his head, arms folded. At least he looks satisfied. Doesn't he realize how tense this is? Maybe he's so far removed from petty office politics that he doesn't care. Now. Do you know what you have to do, Agazawara? Yes, boss. Don't worry. Leave everything to me. Good lad. I wish I, c I knew I could count on you. It's a shame you don't have any appointments with any of sexy women today. I'm sure you're dying to photograph Hazel Williams again or Yamamoto photo me. But keep your spirits up. My boss slaps my shoulders again. It hurts. I'm sure the opportunity will arise to do a course. Until then, you need to work these dull, ordinary jobs. If you keep at it, I'm sure you'll be rewarded, in my humble opinion. Nothing about my boss is humble. Facts. You deserve as much. Keep up the good work, you hear? Yes, boss. He's so loud, I can't help but hear him. Satisfied, my boss ambles back to his office. In his absence, my colleagues begin to mutter amongst themselves. I can't catch everything they say, but I hear my name being tossed around more than a few times. Are they plotting to murder me? I don't want to be cut up or dissolved in a bathtub. I have a pretty bad feeling about this. Jeez, I stare blankly at my monitor. My head's starting to hurt. <sighs> All right, guys, that's where I'm gonna have to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been Zed, guys. Later.